Welcome back to another episode of the Experts in Fire podcast. I'm your host, Mike Bernard, and with me today is Randy Mowry. Today's episode is Gas Line Sizes and BTU Requirements. Let's get into it. Hey, Randy, how you doing today, brother? Oh, fantastic. How are you today, Mike? I'm good. It has been beautiful here in the sunny, beautiful state of Michigan. That's right. Michigan is the place. If you have not visited Michigan, you need to get here. I know you have, Randy. Are you uh, planning on running around the state this weekend? Not this weekend. Uh, Next weekend, we're headed to uh, Grand Haven to do some camping. And then looking at the, once we get into the Labor Day weekend of actually getting into Gaylord, parking the camper, then shooting those uh, pictured rocks and over to the dunes. Um, Get a couple days in, in, in September here. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We'll move from August to September and then September to October is when the leaves begin to change. Such a beautiful time uh, in the state here. I know yesterday I was meeting with uh, my teams and that was one of the questions one of the guys asked. He said, uh, so what's your favorite season? And it's neat because I've been all over the country and I can say I know you were down in in Texas as well. And a shout out to all our, our Texas friends beautiful down there smoking hot for a while but it, it's nice i mean <laughs> it it, is. but when you've lived what we've lived up here to move down there you you do you miss out on the seasons like we have them here and so this is the perfect time end of summer getting into autumn and fall and it's gonna be some fun so randy let's jump into this episode here people come to us and they want a fire pit or a burner and pan for a fire pit and they've already run the gas line so today we want to talk about the ins and outs of gas line sizes and BTU requirements and I'll just kind of set the stage because you deal with this a lot and I, I know you get this question a lot from folks hey I want to put something in my fire pit or I want to put a fire feature here and one of the questions you'll ask is you haven't run the gas line have you and then inevitably they're like yeah, it's a half inch. <laughs> <laughs> no, and the, yeah, this is actually a good one, especially for this time of the year because of so many projects going on. And it is a very common question, you know. And in a lot of cases, what they're doing is they're calling for a particular burner because they, in their in their mind, in their design, they've they've set it on. Uh, you know, maybe I, I want a three foot inside dimension fire pit, and um, they or somebody has dropped a half inch gas line into that fire pit. Right. The questions from myself to them become, has it been pressure checked from a gas plumber to allow and provide the information of how many BTUs they actually have available in their fire pit? Because like, as you know, Mike, a 36 inch burner, if they're on a 36 inch burner or a 30 inch burner on a 36 inch inside dimension fire pit, I mean, you're going to be, depending on the the, the burner, you could be, you know, two, 250,000 BTUs. So it's a calculation based on not only the half inch line, that length of the run, possibly that starting gas pressure. If there's multiple things that they just, maybe they just teed off of a hot water tank, you know, so we definitely want to lean on our professionals and, and have them get with a professional and then give them and provide them with an end use BTU. Cause it's not just about the a half inch gas line that's ran 50 feet is going to be different than that, that same half inch gas line that's ran a hundred feet. Yeah, there's, there are so many things as we go through our training here at Woodland and we develop our pros. One thing you'll notice is we're never going to tell you what size gas line you should use. We're not on site. We're not there. We really, really, really appreciate our pros who are there, who are on site, who can speak to the type of gas pressure and the type of runs. And Randy, I think, you know, we could we could break it down a couple different ways. You can talk about the person who has a house with really nothing going on outside. They're just building that outside area. And, you know, there's no pool. It's not a long run. Hey, I'm just going to run this half inch line. The reason we suggest don't run that line without a pro is because you still don't know what's going on inside the house. Is it a gas furnace, a a gas hot water tank? Is there a gas fireplace or two gas fireplaces? Is there a gas stove? Now you have all these appliances that are connected to that main line and they all take up BTUs. And remember what a pro will do is he'll 
take all those BTUs and add them up so that if you had everything on at one time, then that's your max load. So there's a lot of ways to look at this, but what we want to do and stress is by running that half inch line first, you're limiting your dream. And I don't think there's a better way for me to say it than that right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, a- absolutely. You know, absolutely. You know, and, and what I express to folks, if it's already there, if they've already ran it and they've brick pavement or they've concrete over it, we'll find something that'll work. Right. It's just stepping back a little bit, getting with the gas plumber, providing that information on what is there for an end use speed to you on that supply line that's already been ran. And We'll make something work in a sizing, but it may not just be as glorifying and as impactful as possibly somebody was thinking of because the line is already there. And this could be maybe they did it or maybe they just moved into the house and bought the house and this gas line's already there, which is a lot of calls of lately with with folks moving and buying and selling houses these last couple of years, you know, just on a busy, you know, the busyness of purchasing of houses. That's been pretty common. Hey, you know what? We just, we, we just bought this house. There's this gas line ran into our fire pit and we want to do this. It's no problem. We're happy to help. We just need to get that information first when, when something's already ran for all those same reasons that you mentioned, the load on the house and things like that. You know, we'll find a size. And that's what some people don't understand is they'll attach that to, like you said, a burner that needs 300,000 BTUs and... It might not even light. It might not even be enough pressure to push gas out of each port on that burner. And you'll have, you'll literally have candles. Absolutely. Look like a bunch of Bic lighters. Yeah, a bunch of Bic lighters. That's what you'll have. So we just want to make sure that you get the right thing. So I like the way you're approaching that, Randy. You've got the folks who already have the line there. I don't, I don't want to crush your dreams with the statement that I made. Be sure, though, to to get that gas pro out there so you know how many BTUs you have available to you. Now, if you just want a lazy fire, which that's what I enjoy, a nice lazy fire, then fantastic. We can we can help you out. If you want something bigger, sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice the size, meaning the diameter of the burner. Move it to be a little bit smaller but it'll be taller. So there's a lot of ways to talk about how to satisfy that scenario where they already have a half inch line run out there, but still needing to utilize that gas pro to be able to hook up a manometer, to be able to speak to, okay, you've got five appliances already connected to this line. It's running 30 feet away from the house, you know, to do the calculations and then be able to say, boom, here, You stay inside of this range and you'll get peak performance out of your fire pit. You have fire-related questions and we have answers. You can email us your questions at podcast at woodlanddirect.com or give us a call at 586-221-3638. We would love to be able to answer them right here on the Experts in Fire podcast. Let's jump to the next one. I know we run into this scenario quite often, and that is, hey, I'm just going to tap into the pool gas line for the pool heater and uh, run it over here to run my fire pit or fire pit and barbecue off of. How does that one play out typically? Yeah, that's another common one where we could get into some challenges with the sizing as well, you know, because a lot of pool heaters... You know, depending on the size of the pool, they could be three to 500,000 BTUs by themselves. And if the fire pit is the, we'll call it the afterthought, after they've ran all of the gas lines for maybe like some built-in barbecue grills, the pool heater, aside from everything from the house, then you're going to be in the kind of the same scenario possibly with that by tapping off. Because it's no, it's it's kind of no different than tapping off of something upstream like a where the hot water tank is because your gas line's right there at the house. You feel you're just going to pull from that and, you know, just supply gas to something. You're going to be starving the pool heater because now the pool heater is not your end use for your gas line. Now the fire pit is, but it, the, it wasn't calculated to supply like a 200,000 BTU burner, a 300,000 BTU pool heater and whatever other appliances you're just adding. So the sizing there could really conflict what is available again so there 
there again would be another question for that gas plumber that says, hey, we decided we want to do a gas fire pit. How many BTUs can I supply if we're if you're going to tap off of this and get an idea from them? Because, you, you know, it may be something where you're just going to be able to do an Aviance fire pit of maybe 50,000 BTUs because that's really all that's going to be available without impacting anything else downstream. We could sit here and talk all day about scenarios. I, wa- I wanted a fire pit down by the barn. I mean, the barn's, you know, not feet anymore, but yards away from the house. I want to I wanna have a sweet setup over... Man, I got I got barns stuck in my head because I was looking at a pole barn yesterday. It would look great in my backyard. The scenarios you come up with that we've heard can be accomplished, but they first all need to be vetted by that gas pro to be able to say this is what it's going to take to get down there. Now, that gas pro might look back at you and say, well, what do you want to put in there? So we have zero issues with clients giving us a call saying, hey, this is what I'm going after. I'm I'm gonna have my gas pro out here. I wanna be able to talk to him about what I wanna do. Cause that will be one of the questions we ask. You know, do you have a gas pro running this line? What kind of line do you have? If you don't have one, that's okay as well. If you've shopped on the site and you want some input, you want some advice on what you're seeing there, we can help walk through that with you. So you can talk to your gas pro We'll even give you some cool things like manometer, some cool terms that you'll be able to talk to that gas pro about and and really vet if he's a decent pro or not, if he's going to do a good job and help you walk through the addition of all the gas appliances that you have so that you can talk to that pro. They can tell you what it's going to take to get gas to that spot and then even talk in terms of BTUs. Am, Am I talking crazy talk here, Randy? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Cause you know, what we, you know, we've been, we've been chatting about pre-installed gas lines, pre-installed uh, pool heaters and, and tapping off of these or a pre-existing gas line. No, and, and you, no, you're definitely right on track with that. Um, you know, you brought up a manometer, you know, manometers are, they're instruments that are used to measure and indicate pressure is what they are. And that's what your gas guys are getting. It's from, you know, from A to B is a, is a measuring tool that they will use because you know, gas is measured in water columns between natural gas and propane. And, and what we're looking for, the water column rates are important as well, but they're pretty standard for fire pits. When you're using fire pit burners, a gas, the gas guys are going to automatic, they're going to know that most of those in natural gas are like what they call six inches to seven inches and in, in propane eight to 11. So they're going to know all that. They're, they're used to using that. And sometimes depending on if it's an HVAC guy, love those guys. Actually, have get some money out here to my place. They're used to using their manometers for pressure checks and things of that nature. You know, you get into fire pit burners. They're a, a lot higher BTU. You know, I've talked to some of the, uh, a lot of the guys across the country, and sometimes they're surprised that, oh, this burner is like requires three hundred thousand BTUs. <laughs> you know, so, so so they're a bit surprised sometimes. You know, that's why it's so important on pre existing lines when the lines are already ran and we're trying to tap off of something that's already pre existing, something that's already in place. A lot different versus being on a front of a job, Mike. When someone calls and says, "Hey, you know, I, I want to put a fire feature in my yard. We're tearing up the yard, or we have the yard tore up, and it's something that you know my wife and I just thought about." So then it becomes a whole different conversation. Now we're on the front end. Then Mike, it's finding out. So you want this fire feature? Okay, no, fantastic. What else are you going to have out there that's going to require the gas? Right. You know, are you are you doing a pool system? Are you, are you building a grill island that's going to have grills and side burners? That may get into something where you have to upgrade a meter on the house. So I've had a project where we have a pool heater, uh, four hundred thousand BTUs. We have one of our fire features that requires 425,000 BTUs. Then we have three fire bowls that require 125,000 BTUs each. Okay. We're over a million BTUs just in pool heater and fire features outside. Okay. That's a meter upgrade. You know, so those are all important because we still have to relay all that to to the gas plumber. It's a whole different conversation on the front end of a job. Yeah, you can see how math is important here. I know we had a we had a client from Texas who had access to natural gas, right? And one of you guys had this guy who was just like, I want this, 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 and this, and it needs to be this big. 
and we were up over a million BTUs. And he, he was like, wow. And we thought we lost the deal, you know, or at least we were going to have to pare it down. And he's like, oh, no, it's fine. Uh, and it's, it's amazing when you start getting into that million BTU range because you're, you're talking completely different lines. And most important, you want the features to function properly. You know, that's a goal. That's for Woodland Direct. We are all about creating amazing experiences around fire for everyone. So to sell something that we know is going to look like Bic lighters makes us all nauseous. Nobody wants that. And you know what? I'll put it out there to our pros who are listening as well as to anyone that might be listening, thinking about doing something in their backyard. If you hear this and you you need some more information, obviously always feel free to call us. Uh, we have all kinds of pros who are staffing the line. Reach out to us any way uh, that you prefer. Uh, we have all types of social media outlets where you can ask questions and just for the podcast in general. We'd love to answer your questions and go a little deeper. If that's something that you need, I, I feel like we've talked about quite a bit, though. I existing, you're in a scenario where that line is already in place. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about your Gas Pro and see how many BTUs you have available. And then let's talk, you know, one thing we didn't throw in there, let's talk about is there something else you may want to add to this line in the future? Because that will happen to us as well. Hey, I have a gas line stubbed up here for the pit. And then next year, I want to put the barbecue grill in, right? I want to put a grill head over here with natural gas running to it. So feel free to call us. Those are the scenarios where we can get the answers we need to be able to satisfy uh, what you have already going on in, in your backyard. And then the other scenario is really, if you're just dreaming, then give us a call before you start digging any trenches or looking into codes for gas lines and or more importantly, looking up your pros for who you think could come out and do this for you. And we'll talk you through what you have existing and then what you're going to want to talk to your gas pro about so you can be educated enough to know what to be looking for, uh, how many BTUs you're looking to put into your backyard so that gas pro can then in one stop. And that's that's a big deal to me when I have pros come out. Number one, I don't like wasting their time. So I try and do a, as much research as I can so I can talk to them knowledgeably about what I want to do. And we're here to help with that as well. So give us a call on that. We'll walk you through everything we know to walk you through so that you can turn around and talk with that pro. And then we can get you satisfied with an amazing experience. Did I hit it right, Randy? Most definitely. With the gas lines, pre or post gas line install, give us a call. We'll be able to guide you in the right direction. I love it. Randy, as always, man, thank you so much for spending your time with us here on the podcast. I really appreciate you, brother. Oh, my pleasure. I, I, I love doing this and helping as many folks out as we can, make sure they get everything done the way they want it and very safely. You know, that is so true. We love spending time in our backyards. And I know there's nothing more disappointing than sitting down to a dissatisfying fire. <laughs> <laughs> nope, been there. It's awful. <laughs> It's just, all, it's like, it's like having a wood burning fire and throwing wet wood on there and it just smokes. Right. We don't want that. We love fire. We love being around fire. So uh, to all of our listeners, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and have a great day. And as always, uh, be sure to tune in next time as we'll be talking about something that Justin's going to tell me to say, and then he's going to splice it in here. So... <laughs>